course, we have to discuss Beyonce's Renaissance album. Absolutely um, amazing album. I think it's actually, I think it's really good to uh, well to see the two of the biggest artists in the in music, you know, in Drake and Beyonce, both releasing similar type of records. It obviously goes to show there's something in the water. And then, of course, seeing what is happening with the guys over at Kinda Music, who I've always been a fan of, and just the stuff that I do in terms of going to see people like from the Innovisions group who go and play and stuff. It's clear to see that there's definitely been a change. There's definitely been a, a sea change. Something's happening out there where a lot of artists and stuff are starting to get into that kind of... Um, you would call it atmospheric house, I'm a piano extension type of music. It's definitely something a lot of people are definitely getting down with. And it's good to see um, a lot of the biggest artists in music, especially with those ones who are kind of connected to hip hop and R&B, also exploring it because I've always felt like that kind of music would lend itself really well to that kind of genre anyway, sonically. Um, a lot of the melodies that they use, um, a lot of the lyrics that they use, because a lot of it is lyrical based, would kind of work well because I think a lot of dance music in general, they, it tends not to be lyric based. And a lot of dance music enthusiasts tend to not like lyrics as well. You go to places like Berlin, kind or go to places like Berlin in general and you'll see a lot of people leave the dance floor if a track comes in that's got a, too many vocals on it which is really bizarre but it's definitely a thing that I've seen a lot I know a lot of electronic music fans especially ones who are you know diehard techno fans don't really fuck too hard with the vocals and even some house heads don't fuck too hard with vocals so it's nice to see vocals in house coming back and it's just nice to see that kind of vibe um being presented on the highest level with an artist like Beyonce and for me personally um knowing that this is one of three albums supposedly because it's, it's, it's tied into like three acts this is act one is really really incredible because the level that this album is performing at the execution of it is absolutely incredible so to think that there's two more of these coming out later on is absolutely insane whether or not this will be like there'll be three different genres or this will just be a continuation of the sound or it's be interesting too will she do a hip-hop album will she do because i think a lot of people have been asking beyonce to rap more which is funny because you know, you wouldn't expect that from Beyonce, but she's actually not too bad at rapping. A lot of people would be wanting maybe a traditional R&B album from her. Maybe one people would want more pop. Maybe some people would want more disco type vibes because I feel like Renaissance kind of delivered on all kind of factors. It kind of gave us a good little blend of like disco and house, maybe more so house kind of vibes with it. But overall, the really striking part of it that I really, really like about it, two things actually that are striking. Number one, how it's basically sequenced reminds me a lot of DJ Kicks. So I'm not too sure if that's kind of what they got the inspiration off of, but most kind of like mixed albums within the dance music industry for the most part are usually mixed, right? There's usually transitions and usually you can buy an album that's separated in tracks with the mixes. You can buy an album that's separated in tracks without the mixes and you can buy an album that's just the mix, like basically an hour, 20, whatever minute long of DJ mixing the tracks together of whoever artist it is. And sometimes there's an artist who puts their own tracks on there. Sometimes there's an artist who picks out tracks that kind of, you know, resonate with them and kind of tell the story about their career and whatnot. But I felt like how they put this together, this album, and they mixed it all in, really kind of elevated the sound and gave people gave people an ability to maybe give it a chance because i feel like if it was just tracks if it was just a five minute house track i don't think people would have given it the chance they probably should have given it i think they would have kind of gotten a bit off of it especially when it comes to the black community i would assume because a lot, a lot of them reacted quite negatively to the drake album maybe for the similar reason i'm not sure if i'm much to stretch there but i, would, I think that would have been um, a case but i really liked how it was because i liked how it all flowed into the other and it really kind of lifted the tracks as they come along then secondly, the other option I want to talk about is absolutely the track Break My Soul, the title track. When Break My Soul dropped, um, I was one of the biggest critics because I felt at the time, if I'm not mistaken, Break My Soul dropped around the same time Drake's, um, what you call it? What's the album called? Uh, Drake's album, ba -ba 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 -ba, go on here. What's it bloody called? I felt like Break My Soul dropped the same time that Drake's album honestly never mind dropped. And I remember thinking to myself, Break My Soul isn't any better than any of the tracks on Honestly Never Mind. I thought that like they were probably on the same sort of level. 
Um, but then a lot of people were like, no, nah, Break My Soul is better. And I felt like there's a lot of standum included in it. And it's no surprise really because, you know, Drake and Beyonce have ridiculous stands who kind of can't be objective. I think maybe more so Beyonce fans. Drake fans are quite critical and quite harsh when it comes to his music. But I feel like a lot of the, you know, Beyonce standums, especially on Twitter, are really, really delusional. And they are unable to be rational when it comes to Beyonce. And I feel like a lot of them were criticising, um, were overly criticising Drake and not really having the same energy with Break My Soul. Now, I have to take it all back now. Because Break My Soul in sequence sounds absolutely phenomenal. You, you could, it could be argued. You could argue that Break My Soul might be the number one standout track on the album because it lifts the entire album. Because it's very kind of, I feel like, I won't say dark, but it's got that kind of, that kind of like slow kind of vibe that you know, know well, you know well from like, you know, listening to people like kind of music play, right? I'm really, really hoping this didn't conk and stuff on my computer restart itself for no reason, but we're going to continue. Anyway, yeah. So that slow drubbing sound that you used to hearing from kind of music, this type of affair, is um is something that, you know, you're used to kind of listening to that kind of thing when it comes to atmospheric house, deep house sort of tunes, right? This sort of vibe, right? But the good thing about the flipping Break My Soul is that it's completely electric. Like it's a, it's a, like um, it reminds me of like um, I don't know, a track from like what would you call it, Inner City or something, right? Those kind of classic house tracks that just get you off your seat and want you to maybe dance. It's just incredible how tunes change based on um how you listen to them, where you listen to them, and the sequence you listen to them in. That's why sometimes I repeat to myself like if you're an artist. It could be argued that sometimes releasing albums could be detrimental to your whole album release anyway. So releasing singles could be detrimental to releasing the album because sometimes if a single comes out that doesn't necessarily tell the story of the entire album or tells a piece of the album, it may kind of throw people off in terms of listening to the whole entire thing and make them think that oh, it's one way or it's actually another way. And sometimes albums themselves or singles themselves only come to life when they actually listen to and played in sequence. Because I know for myself... I've been to many a live shows where sometimes a track that I didn't actually like, I've heard a person perform it again on stage and I've actually started to fall in love with it again. I'm like, oh my God, I actually like this song. I didn't like it before listening to my headphones, but there's something about it that how they performed it live or the instrumentation or what I kind of listened to when I was just standing there live, it kind of changed how it kind of resonated to me. And I feel like Break My Soul did the same thing. When it came on, I instantly, because sometimes... I'm not the kind of person who just, usually, for me, when it comes to albums, I let them play all the way through. But if there's a single I really dislike, I'll skip it if it comes onto the album. But with this one, when it was flowing through and I heard Break My Soul, it immediately clicked. I was like, oh, now I get this single. This single is absolutely banging, like really, really good. And again, the album itself, in general, is overall really, really solid. Um, it sounds incredible. It's mixed amazing. And I think... It's sad and it's out of order if you're like some of the kids coming up and some of the younger artists and stuff because it's, what what these albums do is that they kind of reset everything because this isn't even a genre that everyone's competing in, right? Only Drake and kind of Beyonce have basically released these two albums or maybe you say maybe Lizzo to some extent but hers was maybe a bit more disco-y. But for the most part, what it does, it resets everything and it also separates the weak from the, from the, weak from the strong because essentially this album is like mixed and mastered and put together better than anything you've heard. And it kind of really shows up some of the other albums that come out that kind of feel like cash grabs, that feel a bit rushed, that feel a bit amateurish. And that's the unfortunate side of him because I think a lot of this is basically money and experience and access. Like a lot of the people that Beyonce has been able to pull, like I'm just looking at the name of kind of people that um, are being featured there. Honey D. John, um, Now Rogers I'm seeing here, Beyonce, Pharrell Williams, Jay-Z, like... This is, just, this is just bloody money and access. Sometimes money and access allows you, the internet is featured on here, like allows you the, the ability to kind of connect with people who most people don't have a chance to really connect with. And, you know, that's just unfortunate. But for Beyonce herself, the album is flipping amazing. I love all the pictures associated with some of the album itself. I love the fact that they've put in as much energy into the digital release as they put into the physical release with the pamphlets and Beyonce looking incredible in some of the outfits that she's wearing and stuff. Like, it looks absolutely phenomenal. Um, there's a video coming out that I've seen her film somewhere that looked really great. Everything about it, it just looks stunning, to be honest. And I can't wait to see more hip-hop artists and R&B artists decide to kind of dip their toes in this kind of field. Because I feel like another one is a good um, person who could do something like this is maybe um, Tory Lanez. I feel like Tory Lanez's album, Alone at Prom, 
was severely under underlooked. One of the albums that I kind of really liked last year, I'm pretty sure it came out. Was it last year alone at prom? I think it might be 2021. And I, funnily enough, actually, this DJ gig that I just played at, which I just mentioned on the podcast, I actually played a couple of tunes from that album and it fit really, really well. A lot of people were really surprised that it was Tory Lanez when they came and asked me about the tune ID and stuff. So I really recommend, I really would hope that Tory Lanez does Yeah, it came off, yeah, it was alone at prom, which was at um, 2021. Hopefully Tory Lanez could do something like that going forward. I did read recently on his twitter feed that he mentioned that the deluxe album of alone at prom will only come out later because he feels like he didn't get the attention that he should have got because of all the stuff he's got going on with the case at the moment so alone at prom will hopefully come out later on um when all that case stuff is kind of sorted so then he can have a full promo run with it with the deluxe side of it but that kind of um what would you call it i think alone at prom was more you might call it electro um i wouldn't say i wouldn't say indie dance but electro disco but in that kind of field but i can definitely see him doing a lot of kind of housey type stuff going forward but beyonce renaissance album is absolutely phenomenal most people would agree i think it's got stellar reviews again i don't read reviews i don't care what people say about the albums but to be honest from what i've been glancing at a lot of people had the same thing to say about it and i'm really excited to, to see what kind of comes comes forward off the back of this obviously the drama with Cleese was quite entertaining to see happen her response has been pretty brutal she essentially just took the reference and uh you know off on the track itself which is really funny but also shows the benefit of streaming nowadays is that you can just update uh, uh, albums on the go um you know based on what's kind of going on in culture or maybe you've kind of had a burst of inspiration or maybe you just thought you know what fuck this person who's kind of calling me out and making it seem like i need their fucking reference if anything i was doing them a favor i'm just going to take it off and eat all the money that is definitely something that i like to see as well going forward but in general beyonce's racist album is absolutely phenomenal if you haven't checked it out already please do it's really really good work it's really really good work